Thank you, Lord. Lord, we come to you and we want to hallow your name. You're so wonderful to us. And God, we pray that you would have your way in our Bible study. Help us to be in your will and do what you would have us to do. Find out what your will is. Yes. And yes. Strive to be in it. Oh, yes, yes Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, Jesus. God, for those that are hurting tonight, yes. Lord, those that are yes. sick and those that oh, are God. bereaved, Lord. Lord Jesus. Oh, my. Yes. Touch them, Lord. Let your Thank mercy you, and your Jesus. comfort your surround mercy them, Lord Jesus. Endure it forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are studying in the book of Daniel, and last week we started in chapter 9, and the first uh, 19 verses of Daniel 9 we uh, studied this past week. It's a wonderful prayer that Daniel prayed uh, on behalf of himself and for the country of Israel, and I believe it's a good example for us to, you know, sometimes you think, how should I pray? How should I be praying for our country? And, right. and especially in, in uh, this is such a uh, troublesome time and that you think of all that's going on over in Israel and here in America with our elections coming up, just to pray and use that prayer that Daniel prayed in Daniel 9 mm -hmm. as your example. He says here, I'm going to start tonight at verse 20. He says, And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Uh, yeah. I'm just thinking about that last part of that verse for the holy mountain of God. He's talking about Jerusalem. That's just one of the the names. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mount Zion. Uh, I think of Psalms 48. Um, that that's the his dwelling place yes. is there. He's placed his name uh, on Jerusalem, and so it's a a, a precious in his sight, and. Um, in verse 21, it says, Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the even, evening oblation. And so uh, here Daniel is praying and making supplication to the Lord, and while he is praying, Gabriel, it says a man, the man Gabriel, but I, know, that's you, true. I don't remember reading that before. I, but you know, and I know that Gabriel is an angel, it was an archangel, but it does when you look it up, it's ish, the same uh -huh. word for man. I, I would have to say that at times, angels appear to us as men, right. as uh, just an ordinary, what you might think of. Mm -hmm. But he's familiar with Gabriel because uh, I can look across the page in chapter 8 and see there in verse 16 that uh, the word came, the command came to Gabriel, and I said, this is the last part of 16, it says, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. And so here he is again in chapter 9, and um, it says, Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly. So you know it's not a man because right. you and I don't have wings right. to fly. And it says, Touched me about the time of the evening oblation. I was looking for a time that would relate to um, what specifically would be that time. Uh, and so I'm... Is that offering? Is what it, what oh, oh that yes, is. yes. But you know, I think uh, yours says offering. Mm -hmm. I think that word is um, 
you know, it could be gift or it could be sacrifice. It, it doesn't have multiple meanings there for mine, oblation. Mine says sacrifice. Okay. Yeah, it says gift, tribute, offering, present oblation, sacrifice, meat offering, all of that, an offering. Sometimes it's the sacrifice of our lips. Yes. Do you, you know, right. it, we don't have an animal to sacrifice, yeah. but we bring Praise. an offering, you know, of ourselves. Right. Um, to the Lord. Present your bodies a living a sacrifice. A living sacrifice, right. Uh, in Acts chapter 3, it says that, uh, this is Acts 3, 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And in my mind, I was thinking, is that the time? The ninth hour would be about 3 p.m. Now, that's just food for thought, okay? That's usually military time, is it not? Well, here's the, I mean, um, the Jewish calendar goes, uh, the day would start in the evening. At 6. Yes. And then the morning would begin at 6 in the morning. Okay. So, so be the first if it's hour? the third hour, it would be about 9 a.m. Okay. If it was the third hour. Okay. But if it was the sixth hour, you're looking at noon. And um, the ninth hour would be 3 p.m. Okay. And then 6 p.m. would be the beginning <coughs> of a new day. Uh, in my mind, that's that's how I perceive that. Sounds good to me. Now, um, what was that you was reading? Three, one. Acts. Acts 3 and verse 1. It, it talks about... Uh, that Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, <coughs> being the ninth hour. And then I was remembering the crucifixion. And in Matthew 27, it says in verse 45, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And 46 says, and about the ninth hour, Jesus opened, or no, it says cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then, um... I think you're going to see in verse 50, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And so I would have to say that would be about the ninth hour that he passed away. That's just how I read these yeah. verses. And um, just wanted to share with you. I'm back here in Daniel 9 again and looking at verse 22. It says, and he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Now, it, uh, that's like a gift, I see. And it reminds me in Ephesians, in the first chapter, It said, you know that in uh, in verse the first chapter of Ephesians in verse thirteen tells us that in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That verse is very precious to me because it, it's talking about the sealing that comes with the Holy Spirit. And and I want you to know, just because you have that gift of the Holy Ghost doesn't mean you have everything there is to have. Mm -mm. Because just in a few more verses here in that first uh, chapter in Ephesians, he goes on and talks about praying for these people in Ephesus. In verse 16 it says, Cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom 
and revelation in the knowledge of him. Do you see? He's praying. They have the Holy Ghost. But he's praying that they get the gift, uh, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And then verse 18, he says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the, in the saints. And so I'm just going to stop there. I just I see that Paul was praying for the church at Ephesus that they would have revelation, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And when I look in Daniel 9, I see that this angel Gabriel is come to give Daniel that skill or wisdom and understanding and under, understanding visions because you know this is quite a thing that we're going to read here in um, this Daniel 9 we're going to talk here in just a few minutes about um, Daniel's 70th week and um, to give him that understanding that he needs and then it says in verse 23 at the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. And this to me is, a, what a, I think, what a wonderful thing yes. to be called the beloved. Yes. The beloved of God. John, you can read in the Gospel of John that John uh, perceived that he, John, was the disciple whom Jesus loved. Right. And, um, and, but here's the thing. I know that God is not a respecter mm -hmm. of persons. I have often thought if Enoch walked close enough with God that God took him, that you and me could have that same walk. Right. I don't think it's that God loves any like John. But the thing of it is us if we're able to see the love he has for us. Yes. Yes. Well, Which I'm not there. John sought him. It's, and Daniel sought the Lord. You can all see right. him there. But John realized yeah, and that he, he was, was able loved. to feel. He was able to feel it. Yes, yes. And see it. So and you know, if you feel his love, you're loving back. Yeah. yeah. So that's why he called himself. That's right. Right. And you know, God we is not a respecter. That that's we right. Need to call ourselves <laughs> there is a place for yes. you and yes. me in that beloved. Right. Okay. Oh, uh, that's. Yeah. I think you, we all need to realize that. Yeah. And just like. Enoch walked with God, and then he was not, for God took him. You know, the vast majority of church people are thinking, uh, well, Jesus is coming, and I'm just going to be caught away. And I would have to say that those people, the people that are remaining at his coming, mm -hmm. he's going to take yes. with him. And so you're not left out. Right. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. That's right. a precious promise Hallelujah. that he will come, and he will get you. Just hang in there. He promised that he would. Yes. Yeah. If did. I go away, I will come. come. Uh -huh. That's right. I go to prepare a place for you. That's right. right. That where I am, you may be also. He didn't leave us out. Right. That's a wonderful thing. <sighs> Just to think about that. Um, now, so he's going to have understanding. So then we go on here and we look at verse 24. And, and this is where the 70 weeks are mentioned. It says, uh, verse 24, Daniel 9, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. A again, you know, in the verse before where it um, talks about, um, well, we talked about the mountain of God, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But now you're talking about the holy city upon thy holy city. Uh, he's talking about Jerusalem too, right. but and too I connect about us being that new Jerusalem. Right. The church is the mother of all. That's right. I don't ever forget that. That's 
in my yeah, mind. Told us, and when we travel, it's like George's dream where he went along planting them seeds and crying. He's travailing. Right. Till people come forth and be birthed. Praise the Lord. That's what somebody said, I travail in birth till Christ be formed in you. I think it was Paul that said that, Paul or Peter. <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. Yeah. That, that's exactly that right. Sad. This verse 24 has a lot of things in it here. Um, it First off is that 70 weeks. Um, and then it talks about to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. I hope you see that there's a lot of things in here. Um, Glennis, I have to say that I, I watched, you know, you talked about those uh -huh. videos. And so I skipped ahead and I watched for chapter nine. Yeah, I wanted to hear what he said. I think I did a week ago, but now I'm, I forgot how I, I think did. I've been too busy. Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> well, here, here's the thing is, you know that you and I can read these these verses. Yes. And come away with different perspectives. Right. Now, uh, Glennis had told I think us. that's the idea of us joining together and sharing. And talking. Yeah, and right. talking. Because you've got to have another. Other. Right. Uh, well, speaking of talking, what's it mean, finish transgressions? Okay. Well, that's uh, where I was going to go oh, here. Okay. Just to, <laughs> is it, uh, as I was listening to that video, uh, the man that gave that teaching was saying, this could not possibly be talking about Jesus um, at the, you know, during uh, the cross, or because he said right. there is still, it says to make an end of sins and to finish transgression. In other words, there was a sentence upon him, and it was time was up. Well, he said it could not possibly be talking about Jesus' time, but it was when like New Jerusalem yeah. comes down. But I disagree. Okay. I disagree. All right, that's good. So, stir the pot. So, yeah, stir the pot a little. Yeah, that reminds me of your mother in uh, some way. You think about what Jesus did on the cross. And so I'm going to go to a few verses, and we're just going to look to see what Jesus did. Okay. I have a thing here where it says to finish, it says to restrain, and then on the to make an end is seal up. It says or to seal up. I have those same two things um, in here. But l let me just give you some okay. like, some connecting. Okay. And, and it's like connecting the dots. Right. Right? Now, where are you going? I'm going to Jeremiah 23 and verses 5 and 6. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David... A righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth in his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness now I see Jesus in that passage I see him as the righteous branch. I believe I see him as um, the seed of David. In fact, um, throughout the Gospels, you can see that various ones um, called him the son of, of David. You know, that was acknowledging that he was that seed that was to come. Um, when I look over here in Isaiah 53, I think this shows it a little plainer. Isaiah 53, it says in verse 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I want to read you also verses 10 to 11, the same chapter, Isaiah 53, 
I, this whole thing is talking about Jesus and what he did on the cross. Mm -hmm. But verse 10 says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. You see that Jesus did that on the cross. And so also I want to go to Hebrews chapter 9. I looked at the references that it gave in Daniel, and um, you'll see Jeremiah 23 in there, and you'll see Isaiah 53. I see all of those pointing to Jesus and what he did on the cross. When I look here in Hebrews 9, I'll read you verses 11 and 12. It says, But Christ, being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, and twelve, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now I'm going to skip down to about verse 22. And, and read to 24, it says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. 23, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Talking about better than the blood of, of goats mm -hmm. and, and bulls. It says in 24, For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for <laughs> us. So I want everybody to understand that Jesus death on the cross was the perfect sacrifice those uh, sacrifices that they made under the law of Moses were temporary they were pushing the sins forward forward every year to the cross I want you to realize that he did this the, um, and to also to understand that the blood of Jesus went on the cross, went backwards, and covered all the sins, even to Adam and Eve. And it flowed forward till the last sin that was committed. He did not leave anybody's sin out. That blood covered it all. And there's multiple times here, I'm just going to, in this passage... Uh, blood was retro. You could say that, mm -hmm. yes, but it goes forward also. Retro yeah. kind of is like backwards. Right. Um, I can see here that on when he did it once for all, I look at verse 26 to 28 here in Hebrews 9. It says, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared, to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Do you see that putting away of sin as to finish mm -hmm. the transgression that Daniel 24 says, or to make an end of sin? Mm -hmm. And then it says, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And 28 says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And here in the next chapter, Hebrews 10, I'll read you three verses that say, Once for all, 
it says in, in verse 10, Hebrews 10, 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And verse 12, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. And then in verse 14, it says, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. I, I hope you uh, can understand this, that it was on the cross that he accomplished all these things. That does not mean that everybody... It's like he healing. Jesus bore stripes upon his back for our healing. And yet, you can look around. We just made prayer for several that are yes. hurting and sick and need a touch from the Lord, right? Yeah. Um, I know George has said this more than once, that he asked the Lord about this, and the Lord said, I'm talking about what I did for you. It's up to mm -hmm. you to receive it. Mm -hmm. you, you know? To it, appropriate it. Uh, yes, there you go. Appropriate it. How do you appropriate it? You have to apply it. Yourself. Faith. Right. Faith you is... Believe it. Right. Mm -hmm. Know it. Pursue it. Pursue it. We all it. believe God's able. <laughs> we all believe He's willing. Well, in the scripture in, in uh, Psalms, that He says, uh, um, don't forget all His benefits. He's the God that forgives right. all, that your, all iniquities. your iniquities. And heals, heals all, all your, diseases. your diseases. That's Psalms right. 103. Please Go get that Lord inside and you, yes. and and say, Lord, you said, and I, let me tell you, He cannot He cannot refuse you, right. because He is bound by His word. It's an oath. It's he cannot lie. Himself. He's not a man that He should lie. But what He said, He will accomplish. Mm -hmm. And so, if you just hang in there, and keep confessing it. Mm -hmm. Don't waver. You know, I know a lot of Christians. They're not above everybody else. Well, and they sometimes come into our mind, you and, know, and fear. Yes, and, yes. Right. Fear battle. and That's doubt. Right. It is a, it's a battle sometimes. So I think if we, if we stay in the Word, I believe that's how Dodie. Yes, yes. Joel Osteen. Yeah, oh, Dodie his Osteen mother, because she saw it in the Word and knew it was for her. She, and she wouldn't take no for an answer. She wouldn't take no for answer. She put them scriptures she everywhere and like stood on that it. Gal in that movie, that war room. She yeah. put up scriptures all over her house. That's right. right. And she got it. Mm -hmm. She got her healing. She would not give up. So a great example there to follow. Right. Uh, I wanted to bring out in Romans 5. To, because in, in Romans 5, I see a comparison between Adam, what Adam did in bringing sin into the world, and what Jesus did for us. So if you have Romans 5, look at verse uh, 12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We know that. That's a terrible consequence mm -hmm. for sin. Look at verse 15. It says, But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many and 17 to 19 says this for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ i hope you see that jesus mm -hmm. came to rectify all the evil that was done through sin. That's why they called him the second Adam. That's right. And verse 18, therefore, as by one as by the offense of one, 
judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification well, we all, of life. That. <laughs> yes, yes, and do they you see? He did that on the cross. Okay, and here yeah. it is. You know, you and I are 2,000 years afterwards, right? After mm -hmm. the fact, and still living in grace that's been provided and that righteousness through Jesus that makes us justified. Verse uh, 19, I'll stop at this one. It says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Now you may not feel it, but God calls those things that be not as though they were. All right? You, you may not see yourself in that respect, but in his eyes, you are righteous. Right. And that was accomplished on the cross. Mm -hmm. All, you and I have to believe it. Right. To receive it. That's the only way. And boy, when you quote it and you start saying, you did it, not me, and start relying on that boy peace and energy comes yes yes absolutely okay um i'm wondering is this a good time to stop yeah. and go to the second part yes